This video talks about dead space, understanding dead space and calculating dead space. Okay, so this is obviously from the respiratory physiology section. So if you're not familiar with this section, please refer to that um, area. So what exactly is dead space? Dead space is a region in the lung where there is no exchange is happening. So what do I really mean by that? What I mean that is, let's say this is your lungs, this, this is your bronchioles, right? And your lungs kind of start here. Air that is going to be in your bronchioles, is it going to be participating in exchange in, during respiration? Not really. In fact, the first 150 milliliter of air is stuck in here, in dead space. They are not taking part in exchange. It's a rest that you take in after 150 milliliter that is going to be in our lungs and taking part in exchange. So some air, you cannot do anything about it. It's going to be stuck in region that is not going to be taking part in exchange with, with our blood vessels. That's how it is. Now, I only talked about the air that is trapped inside the, inside the bron bronchioles or the bronchus, the trachea, all the way to the mouth. What about air that is already in the lungs but it still are not participating in exchange those are the air so let's say for example if we are talking about the apex okay if we're talking about the apex of the lung there is less blood flow at the apex of the lung as a result there is more air and less blood right as a result what happens is even though you have so much air just because there is not enough blood running through some air is just going to be sitting sitting still okay it's going to be, it's going to be sitting pretty because it's not going to be able to uh, take part in that exchange right so there is differences of uh, what kind of dead space you're talking about whenever we say we are talking about functional sorry physiological dead space or physiologic dead space that i mentioned right here physiologic dead space it is uh, the summation of anatomic dead space okay and functional dead space so let's understand these anatomic dead space and functional dead space a little bit more so what is anatomic dead space it is the portion where there is no possibility of exchange so air that is here okay is there any possibility of exchange no because there is there is no way these walls is going to pass air to the blood and air will be able to pass it back to the lung. These are anatomic dead space. You can't do anything about it. Okay, But what about, air? okay, so you have air coming in here in your alveoli, which is taking part in your exchange, right? Because the blood is here and you can see how the exchange is happening between the two. Well, what about the air that is kind of stuck in here, right? which is in the lungs but it's not taking part in the exchange this is our functional dead space and this is our anatomic dead space and the combination of the two really makes our physiologic dead space okay so we understand the concept between physiologic dead space and anatomic dead space so now let's talk about how we are going to be understanding the equation concerning dead space now this is the equation you have to memorize but even though we memorize equations we still want to know what is going on with the equation which is a big part of the board so you have to have appreciation for equations okay so VD really VD stands for physiologic dead space which is a combination of anatomic plus functional dead space okay so functional dead space I just mentioned here that it's the air that is trapped in the lungs which can ex can it has the potential for exchange but it's just not happening right because there's not enough blood flow maybe there's some problem with the lungs is just not happening so that is a functional dead space so VD which is the physiologic dead space okay it's a combination of anatomic plus functional dead space so that's VD so that's how we're gonna calculate VD but how do we really calculate dead space Okay, first of all, let me go through the different uh, variables. So VT is the tidal volume, 
okay it's it's a normal exchange that's happening the volume that is being exchanged PaCO2 is the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide PeCO2 is the expired car partial pressure of expired carbon dioxide okay so now let's talk about the equation so what what we want to do is we want to find the ratio of the air that has been expelled from the lungs what do I mean by that so let's say this is your blood region and this is your alveoli okay alveoli region so you have 10 carbon di dioxide in your blood mm -hmm. and eight of them are passing through okay so you're left with two two carbon dioxide which is going back to your systemic circulation so now if we think about this scenario then we can say that the ratio of carbon dioxide that is being expelled okay is really 8 out of 10 right because 8 out of 10 went through so what that's exactly what we're doing here okay so we have our PaCO2 that's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide let's say the PaCO2 is 10 which is ridiculous in a normal situation it's just a, a theoretical number okay and the expired PeCO2 is going to be let's say 8 okay so we find the difference by subtracting 10 minus 2 right because 10 was the original oxygen you had PaCO2 A means arterial the small a if it was by the way if it was P a that means alveoli if it's P small a it's mean arterial so PaCO2 here is oxygen right and PeCO2 is really 10 minus 2 which is 8 right and then the, but the total PaCO2 was 10 so to get this ratio what we do is 8 which is 10 minus 2 8 divided by 10 which was our original PSCO2 is going to give us this entire ratio so what we want to do is we want to find the ratio of the carbon dioxide that has been exchanged with this ratio in this case let's say it's 0 0.8 right 8 divided by 10 is 0 0.8 and we multiply it with the tidal volume okay how much normal exchange is happening right so when we multiply this number with this ratio we get an approximation of what is our dead space or VD which is our physiologic dead space which is the combination of anatomic and functional there are equations which is very much similar to this where they're going to ask you to find anatomic and functional dead space separately they might do it but I really really doubt it I think this is the maximum or this is the furthest USMLE is going to go so this is how far we really have to know for our boards